What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today we are going to address at least the headlights in the Suburban. So as you guys may or may not know, a couple weeks ago I was going to get a four-wheeler, actually didn't even buy the thing. On my way home, a tire flies off a trailer and hits the front of the Suburban. Now, guy gives me bogus insurance, I am still fighting that, guys. Um, I think I found a place that he actually is insured, but I can't drive this thing in the rain anymore and this is a major daily driver for me. I hate the fact that I'm driving it right now all banged up because I hate my vehicles being banged up looking like I don't have insurance and I do, uh, but I'm not gonna file a claim on it because it's relatively cheap to fix uh, for the most part other than uh, the fender really, it has a spot down here that really the whole fender would need to be sprayed in order to fix that. But if I'm footing the bill on my own, I'm just gonna touch that up. But for now, I did get new headlights and so I bought two new headlights and we're gonna put those in today. I'm gonna to show you the process of that. But in order to do that, we gotta get the bumper a little bit out of the way. And I'm gonna to try to fix, make this fit a little nicer. I did order another bumper which came in today, but obviously it needs to be painted. I also ordered the strip for the bottom and I ordered new fog lights. Now the fog lights I believe are part of the bumper. So uh, I don't know that we'll get to those today cause there's no sense in putting them in here and then having to pull them back out. I might pull my bulbs out though, just so they don't get any damage from water. This one is cracked and it's got some water in it. I don't wanna mess up any of my bulbs. I will say guys, I have driven this thing in the rain and snow. Snow was packed in this the other night when I was driving actually home from getting that truck over there. And um, these lights are still going strong. So obviously a testament to those. I will put those in the description. I did make a video when I did that, but I will link those. Obviously they are some tough, tough lights. Uh, in order to sustain all the snow and rain that they have been getting. But anyway, I got my helper out here. You want to say hi? Hi. He's going to help me out today. Uh, he's got his tools down here. And so we're going to get started. I'm going to set you guys up on a tripod. I think the very first thing we need to take out is the 10 millimeters here. And uh, then I'll show you guys the headlights that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna be putting in. They are stock replacements. I just, I didn't like the LED ones. Had some friends buy those, they didn't last long. So we're just going back with stock replacements. I'll list those in the description as well. But anyway, let's grab a 10 millimeter and let's get these bolts out of the top. So he's over there helping on the wall. He says he's gonna hammer on the wall. So we're gonna take these tens out. I'm gonna use my little impact, my quarter inch impact just because it makes life way easier. So those are all the ones that actually go to the grill. You can see then it's loose. We're gonna have to take this all back off again once we actually get the bumper. But like I said, I drive this thing. Now these are both broken up top, but normally you have two here. And for those of you who may not have followed me when I put the headlights in, um, there's supposed to be a third bolt that comes in from the side and uh, these bulbs or light housings have been taken out before. And when you don't know what you're doing, people tend to break those off because they just start pulling. And so this light is actually loose now and it's not supposed to be. Like I said, there's supposed to be another one in here. I'm gonna see if I can hunt one down while I've got this apart and um, see if I can fix that. Holy crap, this is dented too. Oh man, I may have, to, may have to massage that out a little bit to get our light to fit in there. Anyway, um, I'm gonna grab, I think it's a seven millimeter back here and a couple of um, pins, like plastic push pins in the inner fender liner and then we'll get it loose and be able to fold the bumper forward. So I'm pretty sure this isn't the stock setup uh, like I said, I think this has been off before, but there's two um, clips that I'll be removing with my clip removing tools here. Uh, so right there and right there. And then there's a seven millimeter up top and a seven millimeter at the very bottom. So we're gonna get those out of the way and then this side will be loose and I'll go duplicate that on the other side. So at this point, we've got all that loose and that what that does is it allows the bumper to come forward just enough to get the headlights out. What are you seeing, bud? Oh, you don't know how to do it? Me neither. This one's all busted up, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, it's all busted. Yeah. The bumper's messed up. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Alright, so we need to unplug this guy. As I said, guys, there's a bolt. You can see it here. Well, let me see if I can show you. It's probably broken off on this. It is. So, normally, there's a bolt that comes in from the side, and that's what this is right here. Um, 
and because it's not there, it lends me to believe that this has been taken out before, before I did this. But I'm going to have to transfer all of my LEDs over and look at this housing. It's just completely shattered. Poor thing. So I'm going to go grab my new housing and we'll take a look at it. Um, the downside to the new housing is that we're going to have to do some adjusting as far as the headlight aiming. But look at my fender is pretty banged up right there. I might yeah. grab a pair of pliers and try to just bend that out just a little bit. Yeah, me too. You're going to try it too? Okay. Um, but anyway, I'll go grab the new light and uh, I might too. bend on that a little bit before I do that. I have a new light too. Okay, and he's got a new light too. So we'll bend this out, grab the light, and I'll show you what we need to do and swap over. So as you can see, I've got both the old one that's all crunched up and broken everywhere, and I got the new one here. Now the new one does come, this is it here, like I said it's just a factory replacement and it's a good brand. Guys, there's different brands out there. Um, I choose to go with this specific brand because it is what body shops would use to replace it. It is um, recommended by vendors. It is not a GM part, however. So because it's not a GM part, um, it's not quite as expensive as a GM one, but it seems to work and I've used it in several occasion, or on several occasions in different cars and they seem to do really well. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing is obviously I need to switch the lights over. So like I said, this new one comes with all new lights, but um, if you guys don't know, I put LEDs in. I was just talking about those. The LEDs are doing really well, so I'm gonna move those over as far as the headlights, but I also have like um, LED turn signals and I'm gonna put those in as well. So. It's, uh, it's literally just a matter of turning, unplugging, and putting the new ones in place. Bad news, I was talking up um, these lights and how tough they were, and they are tough. They still, like I said, they light up, but this piece right here that actually holds it in snapped off during the crash. So I am gonna have to order a new dim, uh, which sucks because I was really excited the fact that they actually worked but it, it won't stay in the housing. So I'm just gonna leave the factory bulb in there and what I'll do is I'll, I'll move, I've moved all my LEDs over except for that one. And so what I'll do is I will just leave um, that one for when I take the bumper off because once I get the bumper off, it'll be easy to reach up in there and uh, do all this. But I'm just gonna put the factory bulb back in there for now and uh, we'll keep plugging away. But we're almost finished. I only have one more bulb to put in and then we can move this light over and put it in place. Once we got all of it put in place, I'm going to go ahead and plug this main one in. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it in place and then we'll go check the bulbs and make sure everything's working. I think I may have to go ahead and get it in here. This is like the hardest part of this job. There we go. Pull it out a little bit. It's really frustrating. I think it snapped a couple other pieces and pulled this together from the looks of things. Yeah. That's not good. No, that's not good. My help reviewer says that's not good. I decided to stop hammering since I'm filming. I'm filming too. You're filming too. Yeah. We'll just get it set in here for now. Yeah. We are tired. You're tired, huh? Wait, I'm gonna All right, we got the bolts in here. Wait, and we'll you? check this and see if all the lights work. I think that they probably will because everything's pretty much the same, but the housing looks better for sure. So I got the lights in, and um, as you can see, obviously, this housing needed replaced too just because of old age, but look at the difference in the light, the halogen versus the LED. So we, we're going to have to get some new LEDs, but for now, it does look um, better. At least it's going to keep water out of the housing. So I am going to go ahead and replace the other housing while I'm at it. Uh, so we'll just duplicate, like I said, that process, 
and then we'll get the bumper back into place. So I got all the bulbs switched over on this one, but what I will tell you guys is right here, there's a little tab right here that holds one side, the inside. It holds this little guy here. Glove blew apart. Um, that's broken off on the other side, so I'm also gonna have to find one of those, that little bracket there. But other than that, I think everything seems to be pretty solid on the other side. I think the foam might have a crack in it on the back side, but I don't think it's hurt. So anyway, we're gonna put this one in, and unfortunately we're not gonna have any LEDs for dim, but I think what we'll probably do is try to pull it up front and adjust the headlights because they are gonna be all sorts of off. So at this point, I've got all the bolts back in, and I even sourced, uh, I had a couple 10 millimeters to put in the side, but guys, the fitment on the fender on this side is absolutely incredible. Um, this light fits great, fits just like the factory one, but um, on this side, now granted the bumper is messed up, but the fender alignment, there's a pretty good size gap there. And I think a lot of that has to do with, um, I think that fender is bent in, I think it's back a little and it's bent over um, or actually in a little bit. So I think what I'll have to do is when I get the front bumper painted, I might have my painter look at that and see if he can knock that out. But because the other one fits so well, and I've never had an issue with the fitment on these things, I really think that um, this is probably crash related. The other thing is, I think part of it is, this has the ability to go in on this side, which would inevitably put a gap on the other side because that other piece that I was showing you that clips in on the inner side is gone, so, or broken. So I'm gonna have to get one of those. I think that might help. So. Anyway, I'm gonna take it outside. I'm gonna show you guys how to adjustment. The, on these things, there's really only one adjustment, and that is this guy right here. And um, it's like an inverted Torx, but you can put, I believe, a seven millimeter on it. I'll give you guys the exact size here in a minute. But what you need to do is you need to measure from this little dot right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, that guy right there to the ground. And uh, that's gonna give you the measurement at what we're gonna base our measurement off of on how we're going to align it. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, but remember that little dot there, I'm gonna get a measure from there, from there to the ground. That's the first measurement we need to take. And then we'll transfer that onto a garage door, which I'll do up front because um, that's the easiest place for me to do it. And it's actually the perfect time of night to do that as well. So let's get up there and uh, get these things adjusted. So we're actually up here ready to aim them and guys it is really windy right now but so you remember the 34 inches that we measured from i'm pretty sure i told you it was 34 inches from that little dot in the center of the dim to the ground so what we need to do is we need to come 25 feet away so where that light is 25 feet away from a flat surface and so at that point 25 feet away you need to measure your 34 inches and then go down four inches so that is 30 inches right there, and that is where we are gonna aim these. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I'm actually using a quarter inch, and I showed you guys where the adjustment was. Um, it's right here, and we should be able to turn this, and you see how it's going down? And we wanna get our light right in the middle of that line. So that's about right. And then I generally like to put my passenger side a little higher, so my driver's side will go a little lower than that. And the reason being, guys, is oncoming traffic, you won't get bright lighted as much if you do that. So I've got it just a hair lower on one side than the other. So I think we are good at that point. There's only one adjustment, and it's up and down. So that's all it takes to line them up. Just a little bit of masking tape. And it helps to have somebody to line up the masking tape. So I had my wife put the... Um, tape measure down while I went across and measured an even amount but it was so windy I didn't want to show you guys a ton of that because I know the audio was gonna be really shaky but we got the 54 back in here and guys it is a bummer that the LEDs did break the surround on that one I mean I, I don't think you can just order just one I may have to reach out to them and see but these lights look so much better it needed they needed replaced anyway so I, that was something that was gonna was actually on a list of plans to do because they were really foggy from um, just, you know, th this thing has a, almost 200,000 miles on it now and they're the original lights. So they did need to be replaced. And I think the alignment will, will clean up once I get that piece on the other side and um, it'll push the outside kind of where it needs to be. So it'll move that 
passenger side light where it needs to go. Also, you know, I think a bunch of the parts on the bumper because it's ripped and kind of sagging on that side mess up the alignment on the bottom. I, I really think that they're going to fit really well. I don't think there's any real structural damage other than that little spot on the fender, which I did bend out a little bit, but it's getting there. Um, it's just frustrating because I'm having to foot the bill on this deal. And uh, I also noticed that one of my blinkers, it's an LED and uh, it kind of works as a running light as well is kind of dim so i think maybe running it with the water hitting it all the time or for at least three or four days is going to cause some issues so um the, the other thing is because this is my daily driver um i really don't want to drive any of this other stuff and i depend on that thing because i use it every day if it's snowing or raining i try to drive that because i really don't care to um you know drive it through the salt or the snow and we did have a ton of snow when we were going to pick that truck up and that was an issue because I wouldn't have wanted to drive anything else in here. Now, some of it doesn't run, obviously, but I'm not going to drive these old things that are easily rusted, uh, you know, because there, there is no clear coat on any of these. Obviously, I'm not going to drive the Corvette. I really don't want to drive the new truck in the salt and the snow. So uh, I don't mind driving them in the rain, but in the salt, I really like to have kind of a beater like that. So um, what I'm going to plan on doing is I got the bumper in today, like I said, in the next video on this thing, we'll probably have the bumper back. I'm going to go ahead and take it out to paint, have him paint it, and continue to drive this thing. Now, if he needs a part for a paint match, I may have to rock that thing with no front bumper or find another little part that I can take off and take to him to get the white um, the correct color. So not really sure what I'm going to do there, but I don't want to be down and not have that thing if it's going to be like snowing or raining now if it's not going to rain for like a week or so i might take the 54 here or one of the corvettes or something to work and maybe the green truck will be going by then but if not then we're just going to have to figure something out but anyway guys hopefully you like this video i wanted to show you the the repair process as it goes along we've got a lot more to go obviously because we got to get a bumper we got to get uh, fog lights which fog lights i didn't mess with today because they do hook to the bumper no sense in putting them in and then taking them back out so i did not mess with that that will go along with the bumper install video so if you did like this video guys like always please smash that thumbs up button if you are not subscribed go down there hit the subscribe button make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next